I'm Dr. Orion Taraban, and this is Psychax, Better Living Through Psychology. And the topic of today's short talk is what men and women have to do in order to love. I'm not talking about finding love, so this isn't a question about dating or attraction. What I'm talking about are the unique challenges each sex seems to face with respect to their capacity to love, their being able to love another person. Most people think they already know how to love. They don't. The fact of the matter is, is that love is an incredibly high thing, and few people are capable of doing it in their present state. And regardless of their capacity, we can all certainly learn to love better. So let's get to it. Let's start with the ladies. Women, the image that I'm going to keep coming back to with respect to your capacity to love is water. We often talk about dirty water or unclean water, but that's actually in precise language. Technically, water, H2O, is always pure. If there are impurities at that level, then it's not H2O and we're not talking about water. What we mean when we say the water is dirty is that the liquid that contains the water also contains a bunch of other impurities. And it's those things that make the liquid dirty and dangerous to drink. But water by itself is always pure and uncorruptible. The same principle holds true for women's love. What love is there to the extent that it is love is always pure. The issue with women is that their love is subject to being mixed up with so many other impurities that it can even be toxic to experience. And what are some of those impurities? There are so many of them. Their love can be mixed up with possessiveness, materialism, jealousy, control, pride, delusion, martyrdom, deceit, and greed, just to name a few. When these things are added to the transmission of love, then the result can be extremely toxic to receive. It doesn't mean that the love that is transmitted is impure or bad, but just like water, if it's mixed up with some of this other stuff, it can make a person really sick. It's very hard for men to receive that kind of love, and women who don't get this end up alone at the end of a string of broken relationships. To prevent this, women have to filter their love, to strain out all the other impurities that are subject to contaminating the transmission of love. And this requires some very honest self-reflection, the ability to discern with some degree of accuracy and integrity when their love is mixed up with things that don't belong there. And the more that women succeed in filtering out those things, the more their love will shine forth pure and unadulterated. So that's women. Now, before I get into the men, if you're liking what you're hearing, please consider sending this video to someone who might benefit from its message. It's word of mouth referrals like this that really help to make the channel grow. And if you're liking what you're hearing, you can also hit the super thanks button. It's in the lower right-hand corner beneath the screen with those three little dots. And tip me in proportion to the value you feel you've received from this episode. This really helps to make this all happen. And I really appreciate your support. Now, let's move on to men. Guys, we have a very different challenge with respect to love. And our challenge actually has two parts. The image that I would ask you to consider with respect to this topic is a tree. Now, all people are born soft as tiny sprouts or little saplings. And because they are extremely soft, they are also extremely vulnerable. And it's in this incipient phase of life that a tree is most likely to die. And this is analogous to people. If you can survive childhood, there's actually a pretty good chance that you'll make it to old age. Now, here's the thing. Men cannot stay saplings. Just like a sapling would never become a tree if it didn't get busy getting hard, a boy will never become a man if he stays soft. So what does that sapling do? It armors itself in tough bark, thickens its bowl, and digs its roots deep into the ground. And these things provide a firm foundation on which to grow taller. 
And it does this not because it's a flex to be tall, but because that plant would literally die if it didn't. It's not like the established trees that are that are there are going to get out of the way of the sun just because there's a growing tree beneath their canopy that needs some light. A tree has to fight for its right to exist. And the same is true for men. For better or worse, in our society, men have to carve out a place for themselves. Otherwise, they remain boys or worse. And this struggle is hard. Like many things in life, it would be much easier under ideal conditions. However, these are not the conditions under which trees actually find themselves in the real world. And just like trees, men need to learn how to grow under less than ideal conditions. For example, it would be much easier for a man to succeed if, say, those around him supported him. But if he can only succeed if those around him support him, then he really can't do it yet. Likewise, it would be easier for a man to succeed if he was given opportunities to do so. But if he can only succeed if he is given those opportunities, then he really can't do it yet. Like the tree in the forest, a man needs to fight for his right to occupy a place in the world. And the way he does this is by becoming hard. If he doesn't, he will secure no sympathy and the world will keep on spinning. Now, what does this have to do with love? Well, if a man doesn't get hard, then this challenge is largely moot, as the man will find it very difficult to find someone to give his love to. And the pun here is intended, guys. Just like a man needs to get hard physically in order to have sex, he needs to get hard emotionally in order to get love and in order to give love. Hardness isn't optional for men, and getting hard is the first step. But it doesn't end here. The issue here is that it can happen that later on in life, men are subject to growing so hard that they are more or less inured to all kinds of emotions, or at least to all emotions besides anger. That's the one that never really seems to go away. But out of force of habit and an instinct for survival, men can grow so rigid that they no longer know how to give or receive some of the other emotions like love. And this is dangerous because a tree that is too rigid will break when the weather, which is emotion, is too extreme. For a tree to sustainably thrive in maturity, it must be firm. Firmness is like rigidity tempered by pliability. Like a tree, a man must be firm. He needs to temper his hardness and strength with something approaching suppleness. And this suppleness allows men to give and receive love more effectively. Now, at this point, I can almost hear the women who have gotten this far saying, yes, I wish men would open up more and be more vulnerable and share their feelings, etc." And it's like, I hear you ladies, but I'm also here to tell you that most men don't have this problem. In today's day and age, most men are too soft. They don't need to worry about this second step yet. And when they do, I'm advocating a touch of suppleness to temper the hardness not a little hardness to toughen up the softness. Men will never be like you, and that is how it should be. So don't use the same standard on your girlfriends as you would on your boyfriends. We have different challenges to overcome. And what are those challenges? Again, women, you have to filter the impurities out of your liquid water, and men, you've got to get hard and then soften a bit. Doing both will make it easier for both sexes to love and be loved. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you've gotten this far, you might as well like this episode and subscribe to this channel. Uh, You might also consider becoming a channel member with perks like priority review of comments or booking a paid consultation. As always, thank you for listening.